Are you struggling with your wedge play? Well, this is the video for you. I'm gonna give you my five top mistakes that you might be making that is causing some issues with this distance into the green. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here on the range today at the Dune Lut Resort talking all about improving your wedge play, improving those distances and those shots into the green, especially those ones where you really need to make it happen and shoot some lower scores. Before we get stuck in, please go down below, click subscribe, click that bell if you haven't already, just so you get notified of all this content that I'm releasing. And also if you're looking for something a little bit more personalized, we'll make sure you head on over to kggolf.com. There's a link down below. But into today's session, we're talking about the top five things or mistakes that you might be making, which is causing some issues with your wedge play. And the first one has nothing to do with actually hitting the golf ball. It's got everything to do with what you do before you get there. And that is all about assessing the shot in front of you. Far too often, players are trying to hit to a pin which they shouldn't be. So let's say, for example, I've got 100 meters to that marker out in front of me and that's the pin. But let's say that that pin is only two meters onto the green or something similar, and there's a bunker right at the front or water or something similar. If I'm trying to hit it to 100 meters and I get it slightly wrong, if you mishit it, you're gonna lose 10 to 15% of the distance of those shots and therefore you are straight in that hazard that you're trying to avoid. So number one is make sure that you are not in any condition playing to the pin. What you do want to be doing is thinking about where the safe spot is. Assess the green. Have a look at your yardage book or Google Maps before you get there. Figure out where is a good spot on every single hole to leave it, where you're giving yourself a buffer and some room. So if you don't hit it perfect, well then at least you're giving yourself a chance of a two putt or at least not going into a hazard. So that's number one. Number two, more so on the technical side, is all about where we position our ball. Far too often I see players putting the ball way too far back in their stance. Now when they do this, they're gonna come down on too steep of an angle. And when you do that, that's just gonna get that club de-lofting and digging down. And as a result of doing so, you are more likely to miss hit the shot and not get the distance that you are looking for. So number two, let's make sure that we're not putting the ball too far back. What I would like to see with ball position for a wedge shot is pretty much just in the center of a narrow flared stance. That's a really easy reference and effectively from there you just want to make sure that you shift a little bit of pressure onto that lead side and that leads us on to number three which is all about your weight distribution and where you shift your weight throughout the swing and far too often what I see with players is they'll be moving their weight onto their back foot or they might even start with their weight on their back foot and the purpose of a wedge and hitting these shots here is to ensure that we're getting somewhat of a downward strike we need to hit the ball first the ground second the more that we shift our weight onto our back foot or we start with our weight onto our back foot that just encourages the low point of the golf swing to be too far behind you're more likely to duff it or thin it and you are not going to get the distance as a result so there you have it there is number three let's make sure that when you are hitting these shots we are not shifting our weight onto our back foot nearly as much as most of you are my recommendation for this is when you set up to a wedge shot, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to shift about 60 or 70% of your weight onto your front foot. From there, you can almost feel like you just stay there. And by doing so, it'll help you get that ball first, ground second contact that you see with the professional. In the first step, we talked about not taking the pin into account, looking for more safety than anything else. And right here, we're gonna be talking all about what you should actually be using. Now, far too often players take a club with way too much loft and they try and hit it way too hard. They try and hit to the potential of what they can do, not the average. You don't wanna try and spin the golf ball from this distance. What you're trying to do is just get some reasonable contact. So for example, 100 meters away right now, I might hit my sand wedge, for example, if I hit it really good, maybe 110 or something similar. But if I'm standing here and I wanna control this shot, I'm gonna take a club with less loft, I've got a gap wedge in my hand, and therefore I don't really need to force it nearly as much as I would if I'm just gonna stand there and rip a sand wedge. So when I set up to this next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through our process. I'm not aiming for the pin, I'm aiming for the center of the, the green. I'm gonna make sure that my ball position isn't too far back, it's more towards the center. I'm going to lean a little onto my left side and I'm gonna make sure from there I'm not trying to hit too much down on it. The combination of those with the right club 
will ensure that the ball's got the best chance of heading in the direction and landing exactly where you want. So there you have it. They are my five big mistakes that I see players make all the time with the wedges. If you're guilty with one of them, well, make sure you rewatch this video a couple of times and go through the process of what I just showed you to improve that wedge play. If you are looking for something a little bit more personal, I do do online video analysis and also have a premium video library on KG Golf. So check that out. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.